Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to this episode of Sex with Emily. You know what? Anticipation is a huge part of what turns good sex into mind-blowing sex. How many times has the build-up to sex with your partner been as good, if not better, than the sex itself? Tonight's show is all about the art of the tease. But first, thank you so much for supporting my sponsors. And one of the reasons you're able to listen to us for free is because of the incredible people at goodvibes.com. They carry the best sex toy brands, that you don't have to mess around with like toys that you're not gonna like or that are gonna fall apart. They're all body safe materials and they have everything. So if you go to my website, sexwithemily.com, you click on the Good Vibes banner, I've got a store there and you can see all my favorite toys that I've tried. If you want couple toys or clitoris toys or you wanna find your G-spot, you'll love it. You can try the Dahlia, you can try the new rabbit habit, which is like get ready or old rabbit if you have one. And so also the magic wand, because who doesn't want that? Sexwithemily.com, click on the Good Vibes banner, use coupon code GVEMILY20 for 20% off. Thanks for listening. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. So for more information, go to sexwithemily.com. And we're going to have a new website coming soon, which is super exciting. Um, because you'll be able to like see all the pod. We could have so much material on the website that it's not always easy to tell what we have. So soon you're going to be able to see everything. We do have hundreds of podcasts. You got to sign up for my mailing list because, like I said, do give good email and check all that out. Also, I love getting your emails. As you know, I answer them on every show. Any question you have, best to keep it short and sweet. Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com because I love that. And I'm here with Anderson tonight. Yes, you are. Anderson, I kind of have a beef to pick with you. Oh, no. You... Well, not a beef. Guys, she's blindsided me because we've talked before the program. We've been together for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes now? Yeah. Well, nope. it's not really a beef. No beef. It's not really a beef. It's not a beef for real. But, okay, here's the thing. I always talk about your podcast oh, on the no, show. Oh, no. I know what this is about. Oh, no. No. I always talk about Film Vault. You have two podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've listened to, to both, and they're great. But you're like, no, After Disaster, I'm not going to, we don't have to talk about that. But After Disaster is really hilarious. It's pretty legit. I, I agree. I, it's I love so that show. It's legit. <laughs> and you're so good on it. So Anderson's- I hate to admit it, but I, I listened to that show three months behind, and I it's like a whole new show to me. Even right. though I'm one of the voices on it, I don't remember it. And it's one of my favorite podcasts. I know that's awful to admit. Which one? The one that I listened the to? The After Disaster. No, oh, just no, the, the show itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I listen to about 10 podcasts, and that's that's ashamedly one of them. Right. Well, I mean, you know what? I never listen to my show, which I think is actually good for, like, increasing your talent and stuff. I don't know. But anyway, so Anderson texted me a link. He's like, check this out. I talk about how great you are. Because last week when we parted ways, uh, I was I was telling you, I guess, what I say about you, right? I don't know. Yeah. We were talking about how I say what I think, and I always say things 
the same things to people's faces I say behind their back so I can get away with it. Right. You're like, in fact, and then, and then you text me later that day, night. like at te- On my way home, I was listening to a random episode of The After Disaster. And you're like, oh, hey, check this out. I say you're great here. So I listened to it, but it was like the episode iTunes messed yeah, up. Yeah, iTunes. I listened to the whole show, and it was really good. But then you're like, here's the real link. So then I listened to it. And the oh, no. beef is, no, no, I'm kidding. But you're like, really, the first beef is that you don't promote After Disaster enough because it's awesome. But the other one is that you're like, Emily's great. No, she's great. I mean, she's crazy. Yeah, I did put a little emphasis on the crazy I part. mean, like a really loud emphasis on crazy. And it's so yeah. funny because I was listening to it as I was driving to San Diego with my assistant. And I don't think that, maybe she doesn't think I'm crazy yet. But she was kind of like, are you offended by that? I'm like, no. I really wasn't. And I'm the one I'm the one who pointed it out and sent it to you. It's not like somebody else exactly. said, hey, listen to and what I Anderson said about you. But you did say my podcast is known for a lot of porn star guests, which I don't like because it's only been the last few months. Well, it's since I've been involved. We're yes. not doing any more porn star I might have AIDS, for a while. I think, from working on your show. <laughs> but you've learned a lot. But we are going to have a lot of super interesting guests coming up, um, a sex surrogate. Things that are just like more in the sex. Realm I learned. Things- listen, I've been working on Loveline for over fifteen years now, and I definitely learned things on your program here. So, and that's Aww, the honest, good that truth. You've never learned in other in Loveline. Um, yeah, and I listen to Loveline ten hours a week. It's my job for fifteen years, and I've learned things here that I can actually uh, apply in the old bedroom. Yeah, you're and not, that's and no you're not lie. even going to tell me what one is. But I, you know what, I had, I had some misgivings after I sent you a link giving you the timestamp yeah. of that particular episode where I talked about you, frankly. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have. No, I loved it. You know what? I've, I'm just, I'm actually teasing you because I love our relationship that you can be like, she's crazy, but she's awesome and I love her. And it was a funny story about the guest who was leaving and that you stuck your finger Oh, yeah, I completely and offended it, her. I loved it. And Anderson, I don't get offended by that at all. I'm just kidding. I'm just... You're crazy in the best In the best way. You're like, no, she's of, crazy yeah. in the best way. And you I wouldn't have her. a show if you weren't crazy. Exactly. Everyone's a little, and everyone's a little nutty. And you are not like the epitome oh, of I, sin- oh, yeah. sanity either. I, I, therapy would do me tons of good. You've never had therapy. Everyone needs Negative. therapy. I don't understand. Like, Well, I've told you, I think. My dad's a therapist, I and I have no respect for the man. It's so funny that people whose parents are therapists are the are most against up. it. I think that whole uh, Running With Scissors book is all about yeah, a kid is. with two parents it totally who are is. therapists. And I think no matter who you are, no matter what your parents are therapists, that it just, in your life, it just helps to go to therapy. And it's not a lifelong thing. You go for a few months, you go for six months, maybe you go back. I mean, the way I was raised that is like a lifelong process because my parents like threw me into therapy when I was like 10 when they first got divorced. And then again at 20 when my dad died. And then again at, at like, 30. What? At 30, I went again. Oh, when you turn 30, you're going to have to go to therapy exactly. again? Exactly. When you turn 30, I'm going to have to go again, which would be crazy. No, but I just think, you know, in life, certain things come and go, and you might need things to work on. And I'm just always amazed that in this day and age, people don't realize the benefits of therapy. And the other thing I want to say about that is that a lot of people have bad experiences, just like the anal sex experience that I would talk about. They think they hate anal. And I'm like, someone did it really poorly without lube. Just like therapists, you need to shop around. There's not always, you're not going to love every therapist. I love how I just tied anal sex and therapy. But if you had a bad experience with a therapist, don't let that write you off the whole process because they're human and they're not all great. Next and time you see your therapist, why don't you bring that up? The anal sex part the of it. The fact that, not you, so great. that you, yeah, see what she says, has I'm to say about that. I'm just trying to speak to my people here. Say that I, I, I use an analogy and I put uh, therapy <laughs> up against uh, anal sex. What does that say about me? I always do. I always, I got to throw in a little anal sex. So anyway, I just think that, and there's a lot of couples that call in and they're like, my husband won't or my wife won't. And I'm just telling you that I've never heard anybody complain that therapy messed them up. Okay? Just makes them better. So anyway, another exciting thing is that on Thursday nights now, you can listen to my show and watch it live streaming 8 30 to 9 30 pacific standard time you can watch it which is very exciting because like i said above guests you can watch me and anderson because we're very interesting and you can call in with your questions i will answer them right away when we're, gonna, I, well, we're gonna have a topless guest on here eventually we right have to. yeah now that we got the cameras up in here but then that turns me into like a webcam girl yeah but yeah, yeah. i should start charging then no, just kidding. 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number that you can call, and it's Thursday night. So that would be awesome. And then also, if you live in Los Angeles area, I'm going to be hosting – I'm going to be at a panel called Beyond the Bedroom at the Body Well in West Hollywood. You're going to find information on my website. It's November 5th at 730 with Connor Habib, who's been a guest on the show. He's really smart. He's a gay porn star, but he's also an amazing writer. And it's called What Your Doctor Can't and Won't Tell You About Sex. What it means to be sexually healthy outside the bedroom. It's like ten to twenty dollar donation. It's going to be an amazing event. Also, I told you all about the Sexual Health Expo. I'm so excited. January seventeenth and eighteenth in Los Angeles, and I'm giving away twenty five tickets. So, and they're easy, they're for good for two people. 
And the expo is super cool because it's the leading sex experts in the world teaching workshops. Plus, and the tickets are super reasonable too. They're like $25 or something. And it's for two days. And there's like a really fun party at night. There's an award show, all the latest toys. And I'm going to be there giving the keynote speech. So feedback at sexwithemily.com, why you want to go, and I'll get you a ticket. And then also, uh, yeah, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Sex with Emily, all those places. So tonight's show, tonight's show is really important, one, because we are talking about teasing. And I've brought this up in the past. I've done shows similar. I mean, I've done, you know, talked about teasing, and I've done it with Menace, actually. And he's like, ah, guys don't like teasing. We just want to get to the thing. But, like, I'm going to explain more in depth about teasing because oh, and I'm also going to get into some of your emails because the thing about teasing is that everybody like slows up the process. Think about like when you first are in a relationship, it's like it's so exciting, like the newness and you can savor those moments and you like wait to have sex and like the buildup of it all and anticipation is part of the best part. And I'm not saying every single time, but we're going to talk about some tips to really make it hot most of the time, if not all the time. But first I've got a sex and then you start what? I was going to ask what you ladies, uh, how you anticipate sex in the first time. Like, what, if you got any concerns, it might be different than dudes. Because I think guys are just question. kind of like, uh, can't wait till I bang her. Can't wait till it happens. Can't right. wait till I get those pants off. You know, it's almost like they just need to get over the hump. They just want to, oh, no, pardon the pun, but they just, they wanted to, uh, they just want to get it finished, you know? That's a great and, question. Yeah, what do, what do the ladies think? I mean, I think the first time I'm thinking, I hope. He's good. I hope he doesn't rush right. Actually, what does that mean? I'm no jackhammer. What else? I hope that he performs some foreplay because the guys that go straight to just like taking off my pants drives me crazy. I feel like guys used to like play with your breasts and undress you and and just make it just sensual. And I feel like most guys are just like unzipping your pants and they just want to bone you right away and we're not turned on. Just like what I always talk about. And you'd think that if you're with me that you might have listened to the show or known something and you might just say, oh, foreplay, I've heard this before. So that's the thing I'm thinking about. And I'm also thinking, um, I hope he's good. What does that mean? That means that, I don't know, there's a connection and his penis feels good inside of my vagina, which most of them do, I would say. I haven't had any penises that were like, that really hurts. It feels like, you know, a, a, a pair, uh, I was going to say a pear, like a prickly like bush or something. Like a cat penis. <laughs> like a cat penis. Um, I'm also hoping that he cuddles because I really like cuddling. And if a guy, if like, okay, so if I have sex with a guy and he, and not every woman feels this way, or man, and he like just rolls over and falls asleep, I feel so alone and a, like abandoned and sad that I want to be cuddled. Would it be better if he just left? <laughs> yes, I, I leave. Sometimes I do leave. Would, would it be better if he left or fell asleep? What, what, which would you choose? I'd rather have him leave. I'd what, rather say. What about that, turn on Sports Center? Okay, A, Sports Center, B, leave, C, falls asleep. Is it? Well, turning on the TV is fine, as long as it's not in the bedroom. As long as it's a company with a cuddle. Does it have to be Sports Center? Eh. I hate sports. In fact, the sound of men talking about sports on television drives me insane. It's, it's like, like chalks- you guys with your bags and your shoes. Okay, same what thing. What do you mean? It's like nails on a chalkboard. Oh, did you see that one? Never saw that one. Let's talk about this throw one more time. Where the fuck it is? When you guys are talking about your Gucci shit. We don't give a. I fine. don't talk about clothes to guys, and a guys shouldn't of- talk about sports to me unless I was a sport fanatic. No, but when we hear you. Guys talking back and forth about it. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ, what are they see, talking women, about? See, I don't do that with my women. Do really do like your wife? Oh, like, yeah. And she's like, oh, those well, not shoes. my wife. My wife's perfect. No, but no, I perfect. hear other yentas, you know, going on and on like hens about. And like, it's the greatest deal on these pumps. Can you believe it? Oh, you should totally go. We'll go this weekend. It'll be so much fun. <laughs> that, no, it is true that women do that. I I don't do that enough. I should. I need to go shopping more. But yes, women do that, and it's boring. And guys, here's another thing. Guys, there's certain things they just don't want to hear about. Like I, again, this goes back to keeping some things a mystery in the relationship, which is also what keeps sex interesting and alive. Your partner doesn't have to know every single thing about your life. He doesn't. You don't need to break down your entire day about what happened when you got to work and the person you hate in the cubicle next to you and the talk you had with your boss and what you had the chicken chow mein for lunch. Right, Anderson? Like, do you really want to hear all those details? No, no, no. no. I, I married a good one. She doesn't really talk much about work. Unless, if she does bring something up, I know it's really bothering right. her. Right. And it's usually some pretty good juicy drama if, if it gets to the point where she has to bring it up. Right. But, yeah, I, I've dated girls who, who do that. And my one of my big pet peeves, if if you are uh, dating a guy and you do have to tell him about every goddamn cubicle uh, instance that happens during the day, don't just lay out a bunch of names. Like, And then Roger came over to Sally, <laughs> and she's all like, and, and you, know how, you know how Travis is, right? We don't. We don't know any of the people no, in nothing. your stupid office. 
So just say him and her, please. Right. Okay? Exactly. Oh, here's one more thing. An interesting fact. I want you all to try this this week. Whenever you're on the street, walking around, there's a group of people listening. Like you could be at a bar, you could be sitting at a restaurant, you could just be walking. Like if you're in a major city, I guarantee you, if there are two women talking, they are talking about another woman or something else that happened at work, and they're telling, I can't believe she did that. Did she really do that? I can't. And someone told me this once. I was like, that's bullshit. That's, like, misogynistic. Women have other things to talk about. But I swear to God, most women are like, yeah, she did. Like, she did what? He said, and or, or they're talking about the guys. They're talking about, like, he never called me. He text, He didn't text you after that. You know, it's just funny. That's what women do. And I think guys, what do you guys talk about? Sports. It's so freaking true. Or we talk about, like, uh, uh, anatomy. What do you mean, anatomy? Your penises? No, other, you know, females. Oh, like, look at that ass. I, I'm not a good example at all. But, I, you know, what guys stereotypically talk about is, yeah, sports, of but course. But it's not like... Uh, politics. Po- guys love talking politics. Yeah. Yeah. And, but they're not talking about, like, their friends. Like, last night, Bobby was going to come over and play basketball. No, you it. guys are, like, really into relationships. I know. Inter-working relationships. And that's a woman thing. So it's not so bad. I'm just saying, just notice it just for fun. Okay, so real quick, we're going to do a... Uh, I found this interesting. A little sex in the news. There's a survey. And uh, people like having sex at the airport. Not in, not like in the Mile High Club, but at the airport. So few things boost the libido like going on vacation. Maybe it's the excitement of new surroundings or the relief of leaving all your stress behind. People simply like having sex while on holiday. So they... They, there, are, there are some surveys that suggest that people traveling alone are more likely to engage in casual sex, which I think is actually true. I think a lot of affairs happen, unfortunately. But I think even for me, when I've traveled casually, sex, when I traveled alone or traveled to places, it t- I kind of feel freer sexually. I might never see this person or he's way, and you just are more open. You're like drinking tequila. So, But these are people who get to the airport because they're so goddamn excited about their trip that they have sex with their couples. So couples are well known to get frisky by traveling. It says the results of their poll, uh, 2,500 Britons was revealed that 10% of people have sex with a travel partner in the airport. So they can't even wait for the mile high, mile high club. And here's where they do it in the bathrooms. Gross. 20, 76% have done it in the bathroom, which they're always cleaning the bathrooms too. So you got to get caught. 21% decide to risk it all in the storage areas. And 12% of them were actually caught by staff or other travelers. When asked why they had sex at the airport, the most popular answer was because they were caught in the holiday spirit. While others said it was a thrill of getting caught in public. I have never once wanted to have sex in a dirty airport. Have you? Have you tell me if you have. I'm a guy, so I've wanted to have sex uh, anywhere. That's true. Okay, good point. I mean, it just amazes me, people with their sexual proclivities. But I guess, you know, if you, if you have flight delay... You know, maybe I'd find something. It's a good way to kill time. You know what? You said something last week on Loveline, and uh, it killed in this room, uh, on this side of the glass. Okay. And we laughed. Everyone was laughing. It was one of the funnier things I've ever heard you say. And I think it kind of, like, just slipped by in there. Uh, and it was, you were talking about how it's never really a bad idea to have sex. If you've got two consensual adults in a room, it's never... You're right, and you you're using an example. You said it's never like you ever have sex, and you're like, oh, that was terrible. I wish I was reading a book. I wish I had just spent time reading a book instead. It was very funny the way that you phrased oh, it. Right. And it's true. I thought about it. It's like, yeah, do you ever finish sex? And you're like, ah, what a waste of time yeah. that was. No. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. You do I'm that right. with movies all the time. You do right. that with books. You do so many things. You're like, you know, you movies, books, hanging out with a friend who sucks. But sex, and I was saying, it's funny. I'm glad I was funny. But We all funny. laughed. Okay, I love it when you laugh. But I think the thing is, is that what we were saying to that caller was that that, that so many, again, this is probably our most popular call that we ever get. And the question is like, what... What, what do I do? My wife, my partner, she doesn't want to have sex as often as I do. And it was like, you have to compromise in your relationship because you just can't say no to sex for months and months because you need that intimacy. People don't realize it. It's not like you can put it on the back burner for months because that's actually what connects you. It's biology and you need it. So I was saying for women, it's like going to the gym. It's like you put your shoes on and you know, you, you never like, oh, why did I go to the gym? So I was saying like, your sex, just do it, okay? Make a compromise. Just have it. You'll be fine. And then you could turn on whatever you want, what television or fall asleep or roll over. Or leave. Or leave. Um, so that's what I think about that. Oh, I'm glad. Okay, so anyway, this is our topic, teasing. You've been teasing it all, all what episode. You, what do you think about teasing? Like, do you know what I mean by that? Does it make you annoyed? Like, really? More foreplay? Because there's more to it. But, but like, when I say teasing... You know, I don't know. Let's let's continue. Let's go, go further down. I love down. it. Okay. I just think that teasing gets a bad rap. 
Because, like, first of all, all your life, you're told, like, teasing is a bad thing. Like, as far as, like, teasing a friend or teasing someone, don't make fun of them. But teasing in sex is, like, the best thing since sex, actually. So teasing is the best way to start something, you know, kind of steamy. You savor this. You savor that, like, suspense, the excitement. And, like, you know all those, like, when you first start dating somebody – and it's those moments leading up to it, like we were talking about the anticipation, like those delicious moments where you're like the first date you like make out and then he touches your breasts and the next time like you know you're going to have sex or whatever it is, wait a month, two months. And it's like that savoring, the anticipation, the sexual tension, that's what makes sex so great. And then I think people in long-term relationships think they can't get that back and they miss it and they're like, we just bang, we come home, we do our thing. We just say, But this is what keeps it going. And you can not actually make this happen if you're in a long-term relationship or a new one. Because I feel like people are sort of choosing between like the grass is always greener. Like I'm in a relationship, it's steady, or I'm married and I love my partner and we're going to be together forever. But I never get to have that newness, that excitement, that thrill. You know, and then people are like me, single, I get all the time, but it looks lovely sometimes to be married and have that person to come home to, to fall asleep after sex, but they better cuddle. So anyway, I'm just going to give you some tips here about how to, you know. I love, now that we've talked about a little bit more, I can tell you, I love teasing. I don't like to be teased. You don't. I know. I love to, to, I love to take, you know, the other person like to the verge and like in a mess with, you know, and I can prolong it and, you know, go everywhere but that spot that they want. That's it. I like that, but I, I can't. Say that I really enjoy it being done to me that much. Okay, that's interesting, and I've heard that from men too. So I've heard a lot of men say like, "No, just go for it's my pretty penis much or just don't." Like, yeah, putting the steak under my nose and then taking yeah, it away. Yeah, like, you're, you're just almost annoyed. Steak? You're like, yeah. "Just give me a blowjob now. Don't like just like go near." But for women, you're right. You and this is the best way. First of all, women will have more orgasms this way because you're turning them on all over. The ideal situation always is that you want her begging for that you to touch that spot. Like if you put like nose down in the clitoris right away, mouth down. It's not going to feel good ever. So the ideal, again, is her begging. So um, you want her to be like, I can't take it anymore. I just want you to have it. So that is the art of teasing. you got to draw it out as long as you can. It's like, you know, the best thing in life comes to those who wait. And I think that is all about the tease. And the beauty of teasing, again, for men who are like, oh, I'm so tired of the foreplay. I think I got an email about that today. Some guy's like, I'm just tired. Like, I can't wait 40 minutes. Like, you get exhausted and my penis gets limp. The best thing is that when you amplify the buildup, you're going to ensure a greater climax for, for both of you, definitely for her, and she's more likely to orgasm. And it helps you slow down. I always tell people that sex is all about, a lot of it is about slowing down, that we move so fast so you can enjoy the journey of sex rather than just the destination. And there are many people in the sex world, sex experts, sex whatever, that say, you know, shouldn't be all about the orgasm. And I believe that. I believe that we are so orgasm focused and I talk about it a lot, but really the whole sensual part of it can be very exciting. So teasing is something that starts before you even get to the bedroom. So let's say you're out to dinner, you're on a date with your partner. A little footsie. A little footsie, a little something something. Um, it can be, yeah, a little footsie at dinner. You can be just talking about sex at dinner. Or you could be like, God, you know, I, I keep thinking about last time we were together. That felt, that was so much fun, the way we had sex in your living room or whatever it is. Um, you could drop little hints on the car way home. You can start touching them or massaging. You can start rubbing her leg. Pretty much anywhere and any time the mood strikes you, you can even start sending the sexy, sexy texts before the evening. Um, or even the next day after you have sex. Like, I always say that sex starts, foreplay starts after the last orgasm. And you know what bums me out when I have sex with a guy for the first time or second? And they don't like, What's that? I want, I want them to, and I had this in college too. I got really mad at my college, this guy in college. He was a friends with benefit guy, but still, I want like a text or a call. Not a call, no one calls. But just be like, that was great last night. But if you have sex with someone for the first time and you actually like them, I don't know if guys are waiting three days still because it's friggin' idiotic. If you have sex with someone, I, this is a chick thing maybe, but I just wanted that would check in. You know? That was fun. I liked it. We connected carnally. Like the next day, like within a 24-hour period, you better like uh, come back. Kind of like when a waitress drops off your uh, your lunch, they should always swoop back after five yeah. minutes, make sure everything's cool. And how pissed are we when they don't? Because you're like, I need ketchup. I've not touched my fries and they're cold. So Why didn't you come back? The, I guess you'd call up the next day and be like, how, how was it last night? Uh, good. 
Yeah. Next and time, my, let's do it this yeah, way. Yeah, and my analogy is if you sweep back three days later, it's cold. Yeah, it's cold, and you're and obviously just coming back to the well because you need to get off again. Yeah. Fruit. So fruit. just say, and then so I remember in, in college, I was dating this guy for like a year, and then we had a friends with benefits thing. Oh, no, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah. For, and then I, we slept together for the first time in like a year or since, whatever. And he didn't call me. In this, and I remember saying to him, like, I was mad at him at the bar. I was like, I can't. I just want to call. I just, you know, and it's funny because it was a long time ago, but I guess I still feel that way. So anyway, I feel that way. I, I get it. I get what you're saying. It's like uh, if you're it's going respect. to go that far, you're going to be that far physically with somebody, you should be there emotionally as well, at least yeah. for the refractory period. You're at least for like a 24-hour period. Yeah. It's and okay if you never text you're me again. You're free to leave after yeah, that. never text me again, but your penis was in my vagina. So for 24 much. hours, you guys are a kindred, kindred spirits. I invited your penis into my vagina, and the least you could do is say you had a good freaking time. Like later. Later. Not not like five minutes later, and then you're no, off. No, five hook. minutes later is great too. It during our cuddle. But like the okay after the little cuddle there, but then like the following day, you want them to reach out as well. Yeah. Before the twenty four hour period. Yes. I can. I I think that's reasonable. Thank you. I think so too. And if you don't, if a guy doesn't, Emily, there's some guilt. I think there do you might think there he's might be some guilt. Like yeah. he didn't like. Like he me? did a wrong. He, he didn't do. A, maybe he like, shouldn't have. Maybe it was a mistake, and he just did it in the heat of the moment. And now he. he doesn't know Why how is to it a approach? mistake? Because whenever I have sex with people, they always tell me it's the best sex I'm not of their talking life. about you necessarily. I'm talking about... <laughs> oh, sorry. It's not all about me. You're right. Or they might not be that into him. Like that book, he's just not that into you. That's a message, girls. If, if he's not calling you back within 24 hours... Oh, my God. It's a message. I have so much to say about that. Actually, he's not that into you. And a little bit more about teasing. But first, a word from our sponsors, who I love. Oh, I have to tell you this, Anderson. Speaking of our sponsors... So I've been feeling lately like I'm just friggin' exhausted and, as you can see, very stressed out sometimes. Not right now. You seem my favorite totally thing. fine tonight. No, tonight I actually am fine. But I just feel like I need to hit the reset button on my body. I don't know if you ever feel like that. Like, I just need to start over and be healthy. I've been feeling sluggish, tired, and even when I sleep 10 hours a night. And I have actually learned that you can be weighed down by up to 25 pounds of toxic waste cooped up in your vital organs. So I'm actually doing this new cleanse which I love because you don't have to starve yourself. You can eat well on the cleanse. It just has all the benefits I need in my life right now. And it's called D-Herbs. And um, I'm on their full body cleanse. And I just started it, which turns out to be the number one selling cleanse online over the past 10 years, which I'm glad because I did heavy research into this. And it's not some crazy concoction of like the lemon juice and the cayenne pepper. Did you ever do that? The lemon juice, cayenne pepper thing? I did it. They're like, drink this for 10 days. Like I did it like before Burning Man when I wanted to be like super skinny. And then you're just starved and eat everything in sight. This is like doctor tested, approved. And I've got, you know, oh. What's it, what's it called? It's called D-Herbs. D H E R B S. If you're English, it's De Herbs. De Herbs. Oh, Herbs, right. Herbs. They say herbs in English. But um, so I'm doing this new cleanse, which actually everyone in my office is doing now because I thought we should do it all together. And it has all the benefits I need. I found them, like I said, online. So and everyone in my office is doing it, which is kind of fun. But we have to like get rid of some things in the office, like chocolate cookies. And it only takes 20 days. You flush out all your toxins and you have more energy. And if you want to lose weight, you will lose weight. So it's a full body cleanse, and you'll be, you'll be done before you'll know before you even know it. You'll be done. Twenty days is nothing. Twenty days. I could do anything for twenty days, and you'll be in a better position for long term health. What's it entail? Okay, so you take like they send you this box of pills, and you take the different pills every day. Like it's like a series of them that do cleansing for you. That's it. And there's I can a take few pills. things you have to cut out. Um, they suggest you cut out caffeine, some sugars, stuff like that. The basic things that you want to cut out if you go on a diet. Yeah, you should be doing that anyway. But diets don't work. And this works because I know people who have done cleanses and they're like, and I read about the two, the testimonial. It's not like a BS testimonial, but you actually do feel better, improves your health, your clear, your skin, the whole thing. So I just say get clean and lean with me. Do it with me. So go to dherbs.com, the letter D-H-E-R-B-S.com. Check it out. Type in promo code Emily and get a discount today, and it's only for my listeners. That's dherbsherbs.com. You can also call 866-4-D-Herbs. And you will have started this by the next episode, Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm just starting it by the next episode. So I'm going to like – and then my, my people in my office, my team, we're going to come in and talk about how we're feeling. I just thought it would be a fun I thing. I do it. Oh, do you want me to get you a bottle? Yeah. Seriously? That's serious. Okay, I'll write okay, yeah, right that. Okay, yeah. No, yeah, you yeah. could do it too. No, seriously, dude. You'll, okay, I would love that. Also, Fleshlight. Sorry, I got, I got, I'm, just, I'm so freaking excited about it. Okay, so Fleshlight. It's the number one sex toy for men. As you know, there's, can you even name another sex toy that makes half as much sense as using a Fleshlight? It's a male masturbation sleeve. I know you've got your hand. I know your hand's been working for you. 
But what if I told you that you could experience something that's like feels just like sex and not like your hand and it's a different sensation? I mean, I know that I have 60 vibrators and each one gives me orgasms and makes me feel different. And I just feel like it's men are sort of cheated out of this experience. They don't get to feel it. So what I'm saying to you is you got to check out a flashlight. You'll have some of the most mind-blowing orgasms of your life. Again, no guy's ever said to me, why'd you give me that? They've all said they love it. And so I also want to say they're offering this new thing for my listeners for a limited time. If you go to my website and you click on the flashlight banner, you get their award-winning flesh lube, which the lube is awesome to use with the flashlight. So check it out. Go to sexwithemily.com, click on the flashlight banner, and put in code Emily, get the lube, get the flashlight, change your life, have more orgasms. Have a good time. Let me know about it. Okay, back to teasing. You so teased some... that across the break. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a natural. Um, some things you might not know. I'm going to tell you how to do it. You have to remember that when you tease, the pre-seduction part, it's all about the pre, right? So you have a little eye contact. You can communicate your sexy thoughts if you're sitting across from dinner. You can talk about, you know, what you want to do. You can lightly start touching, caressing your partner to send those, like, subtle messages. And seductively whisper in their ear, letting them know what you're going to do later. And that might sound kind of cheesy to people, like, eh, eh, eh. but first of all, I love when a man whispers in my ear, kisses my ear, kisses my neck. It, it's a really – one of the top erogenous zones for women is their neck and their ear. I don't know about men, but do you like having your neck kissed or rubbed or stroked or anything? Yeah. I, I like any kind of contact for the most part. Okay. See, Just so, stay away from my stomach. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, and I feel like, again, these are all things that fall by the wayside. Like your first dating guy, he kisses your neck, your chest. He slows everything down, and they just freaking stop. And whenever a guy does that now, I'm like, oh, it feels so good. Like I try to reinforce it, but they still don't do it enough. So, you know, whisper words. We love words. Women turns us on. You know what? It's because it's, it's, like, it's like the combination to the safe. And then once they memorize the the, the components, they, they just kind of bypass it. You know they do I mean? bypass it. They're like, okay, I already know how to give an orgasm. It's like at first they got the stethoscope out. They got their, you know, their, ear, their ears are up to it. They're, they're doing it real slow, trying to figure out the exact numbers. Once they learn the numbers, they just... They don't even necessarily push them or even look while they're pushing them. They just get get in. Exactly. And it's annoying because, again, women – and, again, I'm not saying every time you're going to be like, I oh, can't time and sometimes we have a quickie. Nothing wrong with the quickie. And this could all take 10 minutes. But I'm telling you, it will be more – she'll be more likely to be pleased, relaxed. It also relaxes us because stress is one of the biggest killers of people's sex drive for men and for women. So if we're all stressed out, that's how we might turn you down for sex too. Because we're just like, I'm not ready. You've got a boner. I'm tired. You know, so if you just start this stuff all day, you're more likely to have sex. So, um, so, and also, I always say, like, something I've noticed in relationships is, like, what happened to the slowly undressing? Like, I feel like it's so sexy to slowly take off clothes and to admire our lingerie, even though what I found is that men aren't that into lingerie. They just oh, want it yeah. off. Oh, yeah. I've gotten in trouble. And I'm not even saying I'm wearing, like, matching and I went out and bought it special, but, like, the feeling of fabric... I'm, like, touching my breasts right now. The feeling of fabric over our, like, breasts or our vagina. I don't love that what do you What do you What do you use for the word there? I don't know. Oh, I gotta be... Oh. This is a terrible thing to say as a doctor of sex is that I, I don't like the word vagina. Uh, so what do you, what do you call it? Over my panties, rub over my panties. No, no, no. I don't panties like panties is, uh, piece panties of clothing. Is, rub over my vulva. That's what? another word. <laughs> yeah. It's a vulva is a technical word, and in fact, in sex school, they don't say vagina; they say vulva. For the so where's the baby come out of? The vulva, no. The vagina, but no one says vulva. So anyway, the vagina. When you rub fabric over it, like I remember actually being turned on for the first time with a guy in my parents' living room when I was like seventeen. My high school boyfriend that I lost my virginity to before we had sex. I remember him rubbing rubbing me over my pink satin underwear. And I remember for the first time feeling turned on down there, like feeling like I could have an orgasm. And so the fabric just feels, um, for a lot of women, I mean, if it doesn't, let me know. But just when you lightly touch over that, it feels great. Wait so, a minute. What? You didn't know you could feel good? Oh, you might have known one had the idea of it, but you didn't actually experience I never it until you were with someone else? Well, I didn't rub myself through my underwear. I didn't masturbate till I was 19. Like the first time you had like a sexual feeling, there was another person in the room there with you doing it to you? Yeah. No, the first time that 
someone rub my over my underwear that I had a sexual feeling. That is so weird. Why? Because we all get to our, as guys, we all get to ourselves long before you guys are. You guys involved. are so lucky. You guys have boners at, like when you're five. I get it, but for women, they don't. So again, it was the teasing. He was lingering over it. Sometimes you just leave the underwear on. That feels good. You just move it aside. That's really hot. So, you know, again, we all have the tendency to tear the clothes off, and I just think you don't need to. And then when you're, you know, completely naked, there's just one thing left to do, and that's have sex. So just take the time, linger in your lingerie, linger in your clothing for a little bit. Also, um, you know, take time to appreciate how your partner looks, partially clothed. And again, enjoy the fabric. And men might not be as into this, you know, just undress her at first. If you're into it, have her undress you. Okay, so here's the li- kissing. I got to talk about kissing. Kissing is one of the first things that falls by the wayside in relationships. In long-term relationships, we all have heavy makeout sessions in the beginning, which turns us on, and then eventually you stop kissing. Like the makeout, the heavy makeout. Do you find that to be true? And you don't have to talk about your wife. But in relationships in the past. Yeah. Kissing is right? one of the first things to go. It it's, goes. Kissing is the first thing you do. And it's the first thing it's you the go. first move, yeah. And but then... it connects you. But, you know, as long as you keep up the pecs, I think. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Open mouth kissing. Oh, you got to do the French style. you got to do the open mouth you kissing. you got to do that. Mm, yeah, the you do. You really do. So make the most of your mouth. It's one of those, like, pre-erotic sex activities that gets chuffed aside. Shuffled aside in this race we're talking about to orgasm. So mix up your kissing techniques. You alternate between, like, soft kisses and light kisses and long, deep kisses with lots of tongue. Um, I think the tongue is very important. A lot of people like leave their mouth closed, but I kind of like the tongue thing. Uh, and yeah, don't you think? Yeah, I, I, listen, you're talking to somebody who's got an oral fixation. I, mean, I, I constantly have something in my mouth, whether it's I'm smoking or you know a, a swizzle stick. I always got something I'm drinking. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I've dated a, a number of women who who don't have the same oral fixation I do. And in fact, they kind of find anything in the mouth kind of yucky. They don't want to kiss. I mean, you know, they're not big on it. I, I've dated a few girls who don't, you know, they're not big fans of the uh, the tongue. You know what? That's fine. There's someone for everyone. Like if I was I'm, think- I'm just thinking of the ladies that are listening. They're like, totally. yeah, I, I get it, but I don't really like the, the mouth part. I got it. And, and and you must understand that everything I say in the show is not for everyone because we're not, nobody, no two people have the same exact sexual desires. So you might hate kissing. You might hate your laundry being touched through your underwear on your vulva. Um, that's fine. I'm just giving suggestions here, and one of these might hit you. So, you know, check it out. Um, also, so here's the thing about the kissing. You can bring your tongue into it and heat up other parts of your partner's body as well as you slowly, playfully lick around the ears, neck, the erogenous zone, like I said. Let your tongue dra- t- uh, let your tongue kind of trail down her body to other erogenous zones. And then I always say, like, no teeth. I guess that's during blowjobs. But don't be afraid to use little nibbles to see how your partner responds. And then you can build up to harder pressure, like little nibbles on her stomach, her inner thighs as you get down there. And then the power of touch. The sexiest tea sessions are the ones that draw on all the senses. So here's the thing. When you remove one sense, like, for example, if you blindfold someone, all the other senses become heightened, which is like why I always say you should experiment with a blindfold or like a necktie, whatever you have. The less your partner can see, the more they feel, which makes every touch more pleasurable. And like their nerves go crazy. So for example, um, let's say you just put a necktie over, and I don't know if you'd be into this at all, but you put a necktie over your partner, you could do it with your girlfriend, wife, whoever. And if they don't know what comes next, you can use like a feather and rub it across them. I was gonna bring up the feather. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. ask if you if you like the feather. I love the feather. The feather's good. And then there's those little balls um, on the chain. They look like those. What are they called? Those balls. Um, those silver balls that come down from a chain. I don't even know. They're like chains that you get at a hardware store, but they're. I can't explain it. I have no Cold idea. Cold ball. You put that over your pocket. Okay, forget it. Then. Like the balls. Yeah, they're like these little ball on. things that they're like. Oh, beads. Like, uh, like, like what you put ball. dog, uh, dog yes. tags on? Yeah, yes. I know what you're talking like about. Like the yeah, things. Yeah. Right. That can feel really good. You use different sensations over their body. Um, massage candles. That is a great time where the, the, the heat of the massage, of the warm oil on their body, they'll be like, what? I mean, it feels just incredible. And then you give them a massage. And then you can put an ice cube in your mouth and trail it down their back. I mean, these are all the fun things you could do, especially if someone's blindfolded because they, they won't, again, know what's coming next. And these are just ideas for things that you have around the house. And also, if you want to buy my candle, 
emilyandtony.com. The great candle. I love those candles. I know. And Do also, you need another one? Yeah, I would love another one. I have them in my trunk. Uh, we should also specify, you know, as far as the feather goes, don't just go out in the backyard and look no. for a nest. You should actually get one of the big black plume yeah. types. No, right. Get a big one. And they sell these kits, actually, beginner bondage kits at Good Vibes. Again, if you click on the Sex Only banner, they have all these stuff. And it'll come with, like, a feather and a tickler and all these little things, little rubber things that just feel good. And, it's again, it's really sexy. The best teases, again, are when you feel like you can't control it anymore. And your partner is just like begging, like for desperate for it. Desperate. So that's what guys would say about teasing. Doesn't that make more sense? But I get that you might not want it. Some guys might like it though. Like, what about if a woman's giving you a blowjob, right? And so would this bother you? So she she's going down on you, right? <laughs> I hope that makes you uncomfortable. She's kissing no, your fine. stomach, kissing just, your stomach. She goes down there. She don't puts, just don't t- don't kiss my stomach. Okay, leave my stomach okay, alone. Leave, your, leave you. your stomach alone. Okay, but she's put your penis in her mouth and she's like going at it. And then she, like, stops, and then she, you know, starts kissing your inner thighs, and she starts to give you a hand job, maybe, or whatever. That's good. And then she goes back to the blowjob, and really intensely, and then she stops. Like, would that bother you? Uh, that'd be okay. That'd be all right, yeah. Okay. So that's teasing as well. Yeah. In fact, you know what? Yeah, I've, I've, I've experienced where, like, I could tell that they're, they're keeping me from finishing so that they can go longer and say, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, okay, good. See? I'm so glad we figured this out. All right. So some emails from the people. We have time for about. I feel like we should take some missions from your listeners on different words for the uh, the vagina area and get you one that uh, you're good with. I feel like we should do that. We have. To. Read okay, them off. okay. We actually, but well, we don't have them now. But we just found them at today. some episode in the future. Yes. I, you, as far as I can tell, you don't have a, a good word that you feel comfortable right. using uh, well, for the old vagina. Next week we're going to be talking about like we have like all these euphemisms for vagina that we just found. Sweet. It's, they're hilarious. I love that you just said that because we were just talking about them in the office like five minutes ago. Okay, that's so funny. I don't like I, the word twat. I just want that to be known. I won't say twat. Okay. I mean, what do, you, what do you say? Like pussy? I guess pussy. Pussy's terrible. Well, that's like sex. Like when you're like doing your own. Like when you're when you're dirty talking pussy. My right. mom taught me cunt was the best one to use oh, when I was a kid. No. Was, she, was she wrong? Oh, yeah, you're kidding. I'm kidding. I know you are. Okay, so here's a question about how to touch her breasts. Hi, Emily. My question is about breasts. More specifically, how women like to have them touched. I heard recently that it really bugs women when men come after their breasts like they're checking a basketball to see if it needs air. But none of the women I've been with have ever told me how to touch them in a way that feels good. What's the secret? Thanks, James. That's a really good question. Why? Why are you looking at me? Because you're like the master, breast master? I'm the breast master, I guess. Yeah, I'm just like, what? You're the breast whisperer? Well, a lot of guys aren't, I'll tell you that. Um, okay, they, let, they let you know, too. Pretty Women? quickly. Like, no, yeah. the, the the breasts themselves, the nips, like when they get yeah. you know, hard, you're doing good jobs. Right. But a lot Much of guys like just squeeze it. Like, don't turn it. Don't do the like. Yeah, it's not going to squeak for you. So stop yeah, squeezing. Not, you know, guys do the turn or the thing and the grab. Don't do that. So here's the thing. You always want to go start really slow touching the breasts. Don't grab them because that actually hurts when we're not warmed up. You can, um, twi- you, uh, so don't use your nails on her breasts. Like if you've long, well, you, shouldn't, you should always trim your nails first of all. Just, guys, make sure because there are injuries, sex wounds that happen with people sticking their nails inside and touching nipples. Don't slap her boobs unless breasts unless she wants you to. Don't treat them like toys and don't use rough, rough biting unless she asks, asks you to. Now, nipple orgasms are the second most common form of orgasms among women. You might be able to give her a nipple orgasm if you heed to some of these tips. So, um... First, touch her breasts while she's still dressed. So a little bit over her clothing. That feels really good. And then slowly take her top off. Linger a few minute, few moments and then do some kissing. You kiss her, her chest. Start kissing her breasts and then unclasp her bra. And start with very, very soft touching before you get into squeezing or nipple play. You can cradle them, kiss, brush up against her breasts, and also using your hands. You can make the nipples tense which you know how to do this. Place your fingers on either side of the nipple. Push down slightly. Okay, here's the thing. I wish people could see me right now. That'll be on Thursday nights. Push down slightly and slide your fingers apart. Move the breasts in slow. So you get what I'm saying? You push down slowly and you slide your fingers apart on either side of the nipple. And then you move the breasts in a slow circular motion. Start gentle and take her lead on how she likes her breasts to be touched. So if she's moaning and she's into it, that'll feel good. Wait, I don't, I'm, I'm watching you and I'm confused. Okay, so here's her nipples. And right, so you're doing like the Spock or yeah. a piece. Yeah, okay. doing the peace sign. Right. And you're putting around her nipples 
Okay, so it's another and side. Then, and yeah, the nipples exactly. In the and then I'm just sort of moving the breasts around in like circular, circular motions. So you got the breasts the wax there. Wax on. Yeah, like kind of like you touch your breasts, play with them, squeeze them between your fingers slightly, and then move your breasts around. Tickle the sides of the breast feels really good. Dainty. Be da- you know what? Be dainty, guys. Treat them like they're big round penises. Or like your balls. Or your balls. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At first, now some women. You know, there's nipple clamps. There's women who want the breast. I'm not yeah, saying that that doesn't exist, but if you don't know level. the breast, right, that's next level. Use your mouth. Okay, here's the thing. Use the tip of your tongue to circle around the nipple. That's really hot. If her nipples are erect, like all the nipples that, that Anderson comes into contact with, you can harden your tongue and flick it back and forth and slowly take it in your mouth and begin to suck and nibble on it. Suck, then release her nipples while inhaling so that comes. Okay, this is really cool. So if you're sucking on her nipples while you're inhaling, it, it, it creates this, like, icy sensation. And then when you stop, you can blow on it, and it's warm air. That feels really good. That's advanced level shit right there. Not hard. You suck and you blow. That's not hard. Uh, well, what was her name, the uh, adult star you had in here, Kinder Cross? Oh, Caden K- Cross? Caden Cross. Yeah, she was talking about, you know, kind of uh, getting your tongue and your teeth a little bit. And with a nipple in between, and it's kind yeah. of doing like a little flick, flick, yeah, flicky. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Flick with your tongue. But again, she I mean, actually did it to your finger. Oh, that's right. It was pretty sweet. I, that was I enjoyed hilarious. It. We have she a video said of it that. also works uh, on your clitoris. Uh, Madison just reminded me. So, clitoris oh, and the nip. It does uh, work on your clitoris. Careful with as the well. te- tooth, though. Yeah, the teeth. you do not bite. I'm not saying you bite down. You nibble. Oh, you, like, it, yeah, you kind of do like a little pressure with your the, your tongue and the top of your teeth. The tongue flick works with the clitoris and the, the nipples. That is a great point. Um, and also, here's another thing. Don't just um, stick to the breast per se. You can also lick the space between her breasts, under her breasts. Lick it. These areas do not get enough attention because guys are like two seconds on the nipples, the boobs, and then like their, their penis is in your vagina. So I'm just saying we don't get a lot of attention there, and they're very sensitive to the tongue. So, uh, James... I think that's a lot of information there, and now you know to the rest, right? All right, that's what we've got time for today. And um, remember that you can always – and also the video about Kate and Cross, I was going to say that I have a YouTube channel, and we're going to start putting more and more videos up there. So you can just check out it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And Anderson, thanks for being with me. Thanks per, for having me, Anders. And uh, check out all of his podcasts, After Disaster and Film Vault. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the show about teasing. Well, I've got something that is has tease written all over it. Have you ever heard of a massage candle? I talked about it briefly in the show, but it looks like a regular candle, but it instantly turns into massage oil. And you kind of got to see it to believe it. I know that I have them lit in the office every day just as arom- like they're aromatherapy candles. And everyone stops by. They're like, oh, my God, what's that smell? Because, again, it's seductive. So, again, if you don't, you're like, I don't want to give a massage. You can just buy them because they're seductive scents. And it's the mis- – so what you do is you blow it out. You blow out the candle and the, the, it pools. The oil pools. And then you slowly pour it on your partner and you give them a massage and they massage you. And I just used them before I left the office because my hands were dry and I rub it on my body and it sinks in and it feels great. And they're all like natural. It's like coconut oil and soybean oil and it's a great gift. And if you love me and you love my show, you could support me and you could buy one. It's emilyandtony.com. Use coupon code EMILY. That's emilyandtony.com. Use code EMILY. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to The Sex with Emily Show. I love being able to help you have the sex life and relationships you deserve. And I want to give you the best show possible. So I really appreciate you supporting our sponsors who help keep this show free. Let me tell you about Promescent. Did you know one in three men suffer from premature ejaculation? Well, now you don't have to. Promescent is a quick absorbing delay spray that allows you to have the sex you want. You don't have to even think about baseball or your grain aunt Margaret with a furry mustache. You can focus on your partner's hot body, especially now that you have the time to make them orgasm. Also, Promescent closes the arousal gap between men and women. You might get there faster than she would like. So Promescent helps you last twice as long. Thousands of urologists are recommending Promescent, the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. Go to Promescent.com to find out more. That's Promescent, P-R-O-M-E-S-E-N-T. It's not rising to the top. That's the challenge. It's staying there. Check out Promescent.